Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer and Code. Today in Beer and Code, I drink water because it's a healthy alternative to beer. And I extend JDapper to implement uh, parameterized queries. And if you haven't seen my JDapper video, you should click on the links above my fingers. That will take you to that video so you can catch up. Uh, so we're going to extend JDapper to include parameterized queries. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about what those are and why we want them. All right, so here is our initial query. Select uh, the top 20 countries from our database. Now we're going to add a little bit of complication. Um, we're going to get the countries where the population is less than 1,000. And now if I run that, it returns countries with populations less than 1,000. Um, Antarctica, probably zero. Okay, so this is a little bit more interesting, but really it's always going to return the same data because it's a static query. So let's get this number from a user. So a user can type in the number that they'd like to see, and we will pass that into our query. Use the scanner to get our input, and pass it into our variable. Ah. All right, so now we have a pop variable that will have a population in it, and we're going to just pass it into our query. Boom. Okay, so now when I run it, it's going to ask me, or it's going to expect me to type in a population. I'm going to type in 1,000, and hit enter, and it's going to give us the same results back. Um, so now a user could theoretically enter in any population that they want to see the countries that are under it and whatever. But, bum bum bum, they can also type in things like this. Drop table system or something like that. And this is what we would call like a SQL injection attack. And so people can type this sort of, or enter this malicious code into our SQL. And we're just essentially going to grab that from there and just plop it right in there and run it without even thinking twice. So we really don't want to do that. Uh, so the solution to this is parameterized queries. So that's why we want to implement them. And to do that in MySQL uh, with JDBC, you just uh, put a variable in the form of a question mark. So we're population less than something. Um, but now we need to pass that something into this query somehow. Uh, and right now JDapper does not handle that. So let's extend JDapper to do that for us. All right, so basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pass in the parameters somewhere in this call. So that's what we're going to do first. So we're going to hop into that and we're going to add the params. And this is using our varargs syntax. So basically a user of this method could type in one parameter or two or three. Uh, it just allows them to type in a variable number of arguments. All right, so now we have our parameters. We need to change this code to somehow interact with them. And to do that, we're going to just change things a little bit to use prepared statements. So prepared statement, statement equals con dot prepare statement. And this asks for a SQL, which we will pass in. And now we're going to call statement dot execute query. All right, so now here we get our prepared statement with the SQL with that question mark still in it. And here we run it. Um, so now we need to fill in that question mark. And to do that, we're going to loop through our params. We're going to do it the old school way, uh, which I'll show you why in a second. And so for each of these parameters now, we're going to uh, call something on our statement to set the the data so statement dot set object parameter index which will just use I and then the data which is just params at I um, and I know for a fact actually that this is one index so it starts at one and we're starting at zero here because our array is zero index so I'm going to just increment that by one um, just trust me on that one I guess so 
now we prepare our statement using that SQL with the question mark in it and for each of our parameters we fill in those question marks so um, if there's one question mark we expect one parameter and if they don't match it's gonna throw an exception but right now we'll just assume that they do and then once all the question marks are filled in we execute the query and then do the same things that we were doing before so let's see how that works uh, so now how do I fill in this question mark well I'm just going to add a parameter to here well let's see what happens if I don't do that just yet so you can see the exception all right so it's gonna ask me for a population I'll type in 1000 and I'll get my error no value specified for parameter 1 so this is parameter 1 all right let's specify a value for it pop all right so now let's run it again boom all right and so now hopefully and luckily we get the same results back uh, but now we're doing it in a much safer way so while the user can type in malicious things here uh, passing it through this set object will make sure that everything is properly escaped um, so it doesn't actually end up running that raw SQL uh, so uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about querying databases in Java and how we will make it work with our JDapper. Um, if you guys really like this or learn something from it, please like or subscribe below. Also, and more importantly for me actually, is if you comment below with something that you would like to see added to JDapper, um, something new and fun to implement or something that you think would be cool. So please either uh, yeah, comment below and let me know what you'd like to see next. Um, also, um, subscribe and like if you learned something and uh, had fun watching this video. I know I had fun making it. So uh, thanks again for watching. Um, new video uh, hopefully every week. Um, cheers. And thanks. <sighs> mm. That was refreshing.